and welcome. Uh, it's Thursday evening, Coach's Corner. Uh, just me this week. Coach Serrano is getting Johnson University, uh, his baseball team, off and running first day of classes uh, out in the greater Knoxville, Tennessee area. And today I am joined by a young man that I used to watch uh, play uh, high school baseball, ultimately college baseball, uh, Division II in Ringe, New Hampshire, for a good friend of mine, Jason King at Franklin Pierce. Been a head coach. He has definitely paid his dues uh, as both a student athlete, as an assistant coach, and then as a head coach. Um, today's guest is Chris Shank, head coach at Southern New Hampshire University. When I say paid his dues, a lot of people across the country are not familiar with NCAA Division III, uh, but Coach Shank spent some time at College of New England and also Easton Nazarene, which is located in Quincy, Massachusetts. Uh, Chris, thank you for joining us today. Absolutely, Walter. Thanks for having me. You know, Chris, I really want to draw some attention uh, not only to the greater Northeast, but the NCAA Division II is kind of the lost you know, uh, division within student athletes, particularly across the country. They, they hear a lot about, you know, things like power five, mid majors, division one. And when they hear division two, they probably think of states like Texas or Florida with university of Tampa, but really Southern New Hampshire has a very rich recent baseball tradition that Scotty Loazzo uh, and I know you uh, were an assistant coach and an a, a interim head coach uh, in, in 2015. But can you tell us a little bit about Division II baseball in New England, the Northeast Conference, and in particular, Southern New Hampshire? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, first and foremost, like Division II baseball, I think sometimes gets a little bit underlooked by the reasons that you just kind of indicated. Um, you know, the NE10 that we're part of in our conference is, is a great baseball conference. I mean, you have perennial powers like Franklin Pierce, um, obviously Southern New Hampshire, Adelphi. Um, so you have a lot of really good programs within the Northeast 10 Conference. Um, and ultimately, there's really good baseball that's played at this level. Um, you know, Southern New Hampshire has been really fortunate to be down at the College World Series and carry North Carolina a handful of, handful of times and um, three out of the last four. And the quality of baseball that gets played at that level is really amazing. Um, you know, so I think it's something that, you know, might not be, you know, a lot of kids, like you indicated, want to go power five, they want to go D one, but at the end of the day, like good baseball is good baseball, whether that's division one level, if that's the D two level D three or junior college level or NAIA level, there's really good teams, really good programs across all divisions. So I highly encourage kids that are still looking for a home to kind of, you know, not, not turn a blind eye to anything other than a power five, um, at this point in time. To reiterate that point, and, uh, you know, Scotty Loazzo, the former head coach now and a recruiting coordinator, assistant uh, coach at Penn State University, Southern New Hampshire had some guys that transferred A to Penn State, B, Boston College, and Georgia. So if you could just kind of talk a little bit about the NE10, the Northeast 10, you know, it is an extremely strong conference to the point where Student athletes are drafted out of that conference for well over three decades. But at, on any given day, you could, you can compete with a Division One school uh, anywhere across the country. The issue would just be depth, I would assume, on the bump. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's kind of the separator. I mean, especially when you start to get into those SEC or Power Five schools where, you know, they have guys coming out of the back end of their bullpen throwing 96, 98 miles an hour. Certainly, you know, occasionally there's that guy. Um, you know, I know we've had a couple guys like that in the past that are mid mid to upper upper 90 guys. But for the most part, like you indicated, the depth of, you know, having, you know, 15, 15 guys on your pitching staff that are, you know, 90 plus. It's a little bit different here. You know, we'll have some guys that are low to mid 80s, but really know how to pitch. And then we also have those guys that can run it up to the mid 90s as well. Um, and that's consistent through through the NE 10. I mean, every team seems like they have a guy or two that is really impressive on the mound. And if you're not showing up with your A game offensively, they can beat you single-handedly. Now, talk a little bit about what makes Southern New Hampshire and the NE10 special. You, you know, uh, student athletes and parents now from across the country are opening up and really looking for opportunities to play in these top 25 programs, which year after year, uh, Southern New Hampshire is in the top 25 
uh, NCAA Division II. What makes Southern New Hampshire special for a prospective student athlete? Yeah, I mean, first and foremost, like I think it comes down to the people. Um, the people at Southern New Hampshire are just all so willing and eager and able to help. That was one of the things that drew me back here, honestly, is, um, you know, I just wanted to get back here, get with the people, know it, know that people care about athletics here, know that they're invested in the baseball program and also have high expectations. I think expectations are really good. Um, so when you come to Southern New Hampshire, I mean, we're expected to win and we're expected to develop you as, as a player and as a student athlete holistically. So, you know, that's really what we're trying to do. Uh, but you're going to get a top notch education. We're just on the Hooksit Manchester line. So you have a beautiful city um, and you're you know, 45 minutes to 50 minutes from Boston. You're less than an hour to the lakes region, uh, 45 minutes to the beach. So our location is really unbelievable. Um, so we have a little bit of everything that people could want um, when they're looking to go to the college level and play baseball. Now, if there's one thing I do know about you, you're in a uh, very persistent, very consistent uh, recruiter. I, I mean, wherever there's an event, no matter how big or small, you know, I, I see you out there. Uh, and that shows the tenacity that you have leaving no stone unturned. What type of student athlete are you now looking for at Southern New Hampshire that may be a little bit different than at Eastern Nazarene or College of New England? Yeah, I think, you know, going from New England College and Eastern Naz, you know, we kind of took a little bit more of a blanket approach um, at those schools because we were trying to build and we were trying to develop those programs to be contenders, you know, on the regional and hopefully national level. At Southern New Hampshire, it's going to be a little bit different because, you know, the program's already established. So really now we just got to keep this thing moving in the right direction. So because of that, it's going to be a little bit more of a targeted approach. Uh, that doesn't mean that we're not going to get out and we're not, not going to see guys because we're absolutely going to be on the road and myself um, as well as our staff um, identifying really good players and talent and people that we feel like would be a great asset to the Southern New Hampshire community. Uh, but th it's different, you know, as far as, you know, I'm not trying to bring in you know, 25 guys right now and, and just build a team and see what sticks. I'm trying to get guys that I feel like can come in and can compete for a spot um, to help us immediately as a freshman. Can you talk a little bit about, you know, when you're out at some of these national events, what are some of the, you know, I don't like to use this word metrics that you're, that are going to catch your eye. You know, a lot of parents and student athletes now are caught up in all these analytics and, you know, they want to spew out statistics and metrics. Is there anything that kind of takes that high school athlete and kind of elevates them to a Division II uh, kind of student athlete? And, and, and I'm asking more from a perspective of, is it exit velocity? Is it ball strike, you know, bat, uh, bat and ball skills? Is it fielding? Is it arm strength? What are, the, what are some of the key characteristics for a student athlete that are going to jump out at you from a recruiting perspective? Yeah, well, I think, I mean, that's a great question. I think first and foremost, really overall athleticism is super important. Um, you know, I, we, like to, we like guys that play multiple sports in high school. I think, you know, in recent years, it's been trending where baseball is so, you know, specific to the sport. Um, and there's something to be said about that. You know, you start to get junior, senior year. Maybe you want to own in a little bit more of, you know, specific baseball, um, especially if you're, you know, a, a, an elite student athlete that has a lot of, you know, options from a scholarship perspective. Um, but I, you know, I love athletes. Um, I was a, I, you know, I played everything under the sun growing up. And I think that really benefited me as a player um, in terms of my development. Um, if I was just going to go out there and play baseball since the time I was 12 years old, I feel like, you know, I wouldn't have learned how my body moved. I wouldn't have learned how to be, put myself in certain positions. Um, you know, and you can kind of adapt a little bit easier when you're used to playing football or soccer or hockey or golf or just learning more about your body. Um, so I think that's the biggest thing uh, is just overall general athleticism. And then personally, like I feel like the biggest separator um, to those guys that are, you know, elite division two players or, or power five guys are, is just, you know, physicality uh, when they're coming out of high school. Uh, I think so many guys are, you know, kind of in a big fish, small pond type atmosphere in the high school level. And they're, you know, they're kind of, they're really good on their team 
and they might not have to be physical yet. They might be able to be six to 165 pounds and be really, really good at that level. But if you're six to 190, you're going to be a completely different baseball player than you were if you're six to 165. So being ready to compete right away at the collegiate level, as far as at those elite programs, you have to be physical. Well, I, I, I'm so glad you went there because that's the number one uh, issue when I'm working with parents and student athletes is just talking about the physicality demands, the physical demands of the student athlete at the collegiate level. And kind of a continuation on that topic, you and I were talking previous to, uh, to joining uh, the live feed. I want you to kind of discuss you're still active, uh, you know, with 2024s. Uh, a lot of parents are, you know, under this impression that August 1st, the bell rang, coaches are all over the 2025s, the 2024s is too late. Can you just talk about the patience uh, and the late bloomers uh, that parents and student athletes need to understand that you as a college coaching staff collectively are still recruiting 2024s and obviously also kind of keeping an eye on the 25s. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're we're heavy on the 24s right now. Like we only have a couple of commitments for the 24 level. So um, we get some of our best players, not only at Southern New Hampshire, um, but at NEC and at Eastern NAS, we get some of our best players super late. So, um, you know, if you haven't signed to NLI right now or you haven't committed to an institution, it's it's not too late, especially in today's day and day and age where, you know, social media is so big now, right? Where you can make a video online, you can send it out to a bunch of, bunch of coaches and they can see it first firsthand, um, see who you are as a player and as a person and, and kind of use that to aid in their recruiting efforts as well. So definitely don't get discouraged. Like I said, us at Southern New Hampshire right now, we're actively recruiting um, a lot right now for 24, for the 24 class. And that's going to be something that continues into the coming months. You know, I can't emphasize this enough that, you know, I'm a baseball junkie. And so when I'm reading publications or I'm talking to, uh, you know, poll uh, creators for NCAA divisions one, two and three and even NAIA, inevitably, when the topic of division two comes up, you know, we're talking Rollins, we're talking University of Tampa, but every single uh, coach, every single uh, baseball influencer is always bringing up Southern New Hampshire. Uh, and to that end, when we talk to parents, Chris, they always want to bring up, well, what type of opportunities uh, do I get for summer baseball or professional baseball, you know, if we're going to a Division three or Division two program? And I know you can speak to this because you were uh, a, a draft pick for the Oakland A's. Talk about the opportunities, uh, both within the summer baseball leagues here in New England, as well as the draft. Players student athletes do get opportunities uh, places like the Cape places like the New England Collegiate League Northwoods League but they also do get exposed to the major league draft can you talk a little bit about that yeah I mean absolutely I mean it's kind of you know it's kind of cliche and you know I, I guess I don't a hundred percent believe this but because you also have to be with the right program and kind of market yourself at the same time. You have to have coaches that will go to bat for you. But if you are good enough, like they're going to come find you too. And, you know, I went to a small high school in the middle of, you know, North central Massachusetts at Oakmont regional high school. And there was a couple scouts that would come see me in high school. And it wasn't because Oakmont regional high school had a history of getting draft picks out there. Right. But, you know, certainly if you're at those schools, that have had a history of getting guys drafted, it's a little bit easier, but it comes down to, you know, your coach and the willingness for them to get you out in the summertime, you know, get you in the NECBL, get you in the Futures League, the Alaskan League, the Cape. These are really great opportunities for you to showcase what you can do against the nation's best. Um, you know, so we have guys at Southern New Hampshire that are playing in the Cape. Well, they're going to have guys that are playing for Clemson or Vanderbilt or Florida down there. And, you know, that's a great opportunity for you to showcase yourself in front of those professional scouts and kind of see where you stack up. Um, so it's, it's a really good opportunity for guys to do that during the summertime. And um, certainly something that we make a priority here at Southern New Hampshire. You know, one of the questions that I wanted to ask you was submitted. Uh, I was speaking uh, this past week to a parent uh, in trying to convince them about the Northeast and a few of the schools here in the Northeast with uh, their family being from Texas. 
Talk about your Southern trip. Talk about the schedule that Southern New Hampshire plays. Obviously, people equate, whether it's New England, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Maine, et cetera, with cold weather in the spring. But, you know, you kind of counteract that by having a pretty aggressive early uh, schedule down south. And then obviously, believe it or not, the weather does warm up here. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, while we may play baseball on a few cold weather days, but for the most part, your schedule <clears throat> is pretty appealing for a potential student athlete early on in the season. Yeah, I mean, we do do some traveling. Um, you know, this year we're actually scheduled to open up at Minute Maid Park in Houston uh, for a three-game set, uh, which is going to be exciting. That's going to be, you know, February 2nd, I think, through the 5th. And uh, we're going to go down there and, and kind of get it on for a little bit down there. And then we'll come back and we'll probably have a week or two off. Um, and then we're going to head down to Myrtle Beach uh, for a long weekend and probably play four or five games down there. Um, and that will really kind of get us um, into early March at that point. And, um, you know, we'll take maybe a weekend trip here or there to kind of go down to Jersey and play uh, where we stay overnight a night or two. Um, and then at that point, we're kind of back home and, and in mid-March and able to kind of play uh, regionally and locally at that point in time. So, you know, it's great because it, it allows the kids to be able to travel a little bit, the country, um, at the Division II level. Um, I think at the Division III level, yes, you'll take those Southern trips occasionally, but it's usually just one trip. Um, you know, here in the past, we went out to Colorado Mesa uh, early, early, not last year. That trip actually got canceled, but the year before that, before that um, they went out to Colorado Mesa and played. So we're always looking for um, new teams and new opportunities that we can go see early in the year. You know, a, a lot of parents, when they are watching these types of uh, podcasts, always ask, how do you, Chris, like to be contacted? Some coaches prefer email, some per coaches prefer social media. And what do you want to have included in your email? Is it a video, statistics? What is it that you as a staff uh, would like? How would you prepare, you know, enjoy yeah. being contacted by a prospective student athlete or their family? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, video is always great. Email is fine. Um, you know, I think if you're going to email, I would, you know, I would urge it to be as personalized as you possibly can. You know, I've gotten those emails before, you know, hello, Coach Shank. And they it's a school that I've never been at before in the past. So you can you can tell that you're just completely cutting and pasting. So I want it to be specific to our school. If you have interest in Southern New Hampshire, like there should be something that you know about our program, um, first and foremost. And then, you know, it doesn't need to be long, uh, short and sweet and include video. And if you're a position player, you know, it should have if you're an infielder, it should have you taking some ground balls, just probably about 10 ground balls, a few right at you, a few forehands, a few backhands, a couple slow rollers, and then a couple rounds of BP and maybe a couple in-game at-bats. And, and we're in good shape at that point. That'll at least allow me to get a feel of who you are, how your body moves, how athletic you are. And then depending on what I see there, now we can follow up um, on the phone and we can talk and kind of see how you might potentially fit into Southern New Hampshire at that point. And on the flip side, if you're a pitcher, you know, you know, pitchers is a little bit easier to evaluate, I think, over over video, just because, you know, typically there's a radar gun involved and you can see how consistent they are in the strike zone. I personally would like an unedited video of maybe 10 to 10 to 15 pitches where you're not cutting the cutting the clip. And, you know, I want to see 15 pitches in a row and let me see how where you are in the strike zone and, and show me some velos. And then, you know, we can obviously kind of talk at that point as well. So as a former pitcher, um, I want I, I really want to expand on that a, a quick second because it's so true. You know, pitchers will send those clips of the swing and miss or, you know, the punch uh, on a breaking ball. But you don't see the sequencing. You don't see the tunneling. You don't see the in and out of an at bat. Can you just expand on that a little bit as far as from a pitching perspective in that video? Do you want to see the open side if you're a right-hander from third base? Do you want to see from behind home plate? Uh, where would you like the video to come from? And, and uh, talk a little bit about, you know, the sequencing and why it's important to see that. Yeah, I mean, I would say definitely from behind the plate and then obviously the third base side as well. Probably a, a little bit of both. Um, I think it's really important just to be able to see that third base side view as far as how your body moves and how your hips rotate and where your arm slot is. Um, but I like, like I said before, the unedited uh, clips, because at that point in time, you can see pitchability, right? And I think, you know, 
there's a fine line between velocity and then also pitchability now. And I think everybody falls in love with, you know, the guys that are throwing, you know, 94, 96, and, and that's great. There's, there's a place for that. But if you're throwing 94, 96 and you can't hit water, if you fell out of a boat, that's not going to do us any good. So, um, you know, I like those, I like those guys that have pitchability that know how to pitch that are really good competitors on the mound. Um, I think is huge. And, you know, I like guys that, you know, can throw a breaking ball in a 2-0 count or throw a changeup, you know, down the middle with a little bit of arm side run when in a 3-1 count. Um, you know, can you do those things? Um, so those are those are important. Those are important topics and important aspects that you can see about a pitcher when you have those unedited videos um, where you can see at bats on a consistent basis. Well, Chris, I want to say thank you. This has been tremendously enlightening, and I'm really glad that we got the opportunity to connect because I know your season, uh, your school year is about to kick off, and I know it's about to get extremely busy. If there's anything that I can ever do, please, uh, or Dave Serrano can do, please let us know. We're happy to, uh, of course, I'm a big fan, so I'm going to be telling families uh, and student athletes about uh, Southern New Hampshire uh, and uh, I'll make sure all your contact information is down below. I want to make sure parents understand, you know, Chris is available via email. We'll put his social media profile up so that if a student athlete wants to go ahead and reach out uh, to Southern New Hampshire, they can certainly do so. Best of luck in uh, 2024 and beyond, uh, Chris, and thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you so much, Walter, for having us on. And, you know, likewise, if there's anything I can do for you guys, please don't hesitate to reach out. And I wish everybody out there the best of luck this upcoming year. Super. And I want to let parents know, again, you, I get a lot of uh, questions pertaining to Six Tool, and I'm going to send some information over to Coach Shank. You know, Six Tool is an app. It's, it's for baseball organizations, college programs. It was developed by former major leaguers and Division I uh, college student athletes from Northwestern University. It's a baseball intellect, baseball IQ app that obviously can be structured from beginner, intermediate, and uh, you know, expert. And it's the type of app that is going to benefit not only a college staff, high school staff, uh, travel ball staff, but also student athletes individually as well, because it brings up game situations and it, and it brings up uh, baseball topics as far as what the facts and the information are. Uh, so it tests your baseball knowledge. So go ahead and reach out to the link down below to the six tool and join us next week. We will be talking uh, to uh, Rutgers University as well as the University of Charlotte and Rob Woodward, head coach at Charlotte University, will join us. Until next week, have a great week in baseball and join us next week.